Hi, I'm Sean from hollyparkmedia.com, and we're going to talk about Adobe Audition here for a few minutes. I've used Audition, well, since I stopped using reel-to-reel -reel tapes working in radio. So it's been a while. I've used Audition since before it was called Audition. Last week, I had a huge project. I was doing the voiceover for this mammoth uh, series of modules, e-learning modules, 65,000 words. By point of comparison, Catcher in the Rye is 73,000 words. Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse-Five is 49,000. So it was a lot of wordiness. Just out of sheer necessity, I had to reduce my workflow. So it made me dive into a couple of aspects of Adobe Audition that I'd really never gotten into before, or at least not this deeply. One of them is keyboard shortcuts. And, you know, as you know, it's got a lot of the same shortcuts that Microsoft Word has, cut and paste and all of that kind of stuff. It's got its own series of shortcuts as well. But you can make shortcuts in Adobe Audition. And I found that that was a really great way to just streamline my workflow. See, it's got all of these menu items where you can actually create shortcuts. For a lot of them, there aren't shortcuts yet, but you can create them. And the favorites menu, something else we'll talk about at some point, uh, basically a way to make macros. You can do multiple operations with one keystroke, which is very cool. But something you can do that just way ramps up the coolness is then you can create a keyboard shortcut for the favorite that you've made. And that's what I did here, this vocal processing default. It's some EQ and some dynamics processing and some other stuff that I apply to everything that I do. And I created this shortcut. I'll just delete it and show you how to do it. Just hit add and then do whatever you're going to do, whatever operation. And so shift F makes that happen. Uh, I had some other keyboard shortcuts, shift three to hard limit to minus three, uh, normalize to 0 0.1 for shift to one. So I can do all of those things with just one keystroke, which is just really amazing. And it really has streamlined my workflow incredibly because before that, to do my processing, I'd go to favorites and uh, voiceover default, voice processing default. Well, now I just hit shift F and there it goes. So, you know, that little bit of time when you're looking at a project this big, that little bit of time really adds up. I mean, it really does. But something else that I discovered that saved me a ton of time was using markers in a different way than I had before. If you hit M on the keyboard, you get a marker, which just allows you to delineate sections of your file. And if you do a selection and then hit M, you get a range marker, which allows you then to do whatever you want to do in there and also uh, mark that off. But what you can do with the range markers that's extremely cool that I didn't really know about is I can name this anything I want to. And there's a markers tab where you've got a little menu. But I can take uh, this marker here, put that at the very beginning of my little uh, file. So if I'm doing an e-learning uh, module, the first slide is going to be 01, welcome. Okay, so that's kind of what it's going to look like. In fact, I've got one here that actually is already done, kind of like how Julia Child would pull the souffle out of the oven. There we go. What I would normally do here is save as. I would do save section as. So I'd uh, pull out that section, and then I'd go up here to save selection as. Well, you can do the same thing using the markers, and it's a whole lot faster. What I can do is just double-click on this marker, menu. Just double click on intro. It selects it for me. You see this little guy here? Looks kind of like a download icon. Well, what it does is it exports the audio between the range markers using the file name that you've set up. See, so you use marker names in file name. So it'll save whatever name that I've already given that marker. It'll save it as the file. So all I have to do is hit, uh, hit export. And I can just go right down the, the line here and just hit export. And the other thing is I've set up a keyboard shortcut that allows me to just go shift E, that window comes up. I hit export, uh, go down to the next one, shift E. And so what took me half an hour, 45 minutes, takes me about two minutes now, which is just 
fabulous. So I would encourage you to dive deeply into both the keyboard shortcuts options there and also learn to use these range markers, something I wish I'd done about 15 years ago, but <laughs> better late than never. I am an old dog and this is a new trick that I just wanted to share with you today. So thanks for watching and you can check out my website, hollyparkmedia.com. There's a blog, there's videos, all kinds of fun stuff, hollyparkmedia.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you.